hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Everyone who has joined in person and also uh, who are joining online. Um, I'm Ibrahim Saleem. I'm from Code for Pakistan and I'm joined by my colleague Mubassir Hayat. Um, today we're going to talk about floodlight. Um, so um, we have traveled close to 4,000 miles uh, to be here with you today uh, to share the story of floodlight. Floodlight is a crowdsourced flood mapping platform developed by a team at Code for Pakistan uh, in response to the 2022 floods in Pakistan. Um, so uh, we wanted to start today's session by sharing, uh, you know, uh, the journey of how floodlight was developed. But I'd like to share some uh, background of what, what Code for Pakistan does. So Code for Pakistan is a civic innovation uh, nonprofit dedicated to designing technology uh, to improve quality of life and improve access to government services across Pakistan. Um, so we mainly work on uh, four pillars. We want to uh, bridge the gap between government and citizens, work on citizen participation and co-creation, um, you know, working on collaborative climate awareness and climate prote protection initiatives, and mainly we work on civic innovation fellowships and internships. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned, we, we, have, uh, we have developed a short video um, on floodlight, on how it was developed, responding to, to the floods. So I would request if we can play the short video. Yeah. The 2022 floods in Pakistan, attributed to global climate change, unleashed more water in a few days than seen over three decades. An unprecedented disaster on an unimaginable scale, it crippled the nation. Hospitals, schools, medical centers and power grids were all overtaken by this great deluge. I heard heart-wrenching stories. Children forced to drink from contaminated waters fathers unable to bury their children due to lack of dry land. I hail from a small village in northern Pakistan, Sawadi. For weeks, the skies darkened ominously, forewarning us. As the first signs of flood appeared, our village was among the first hit. Here, where life is deeply intertwined with the land and the rhythm of the river, the impact was immediate and devastating. With Mubassir on the ground in Swabi, we were able to connect with impacted families and local communities to identify the most pressing issues faced by flood victims firsthand. We ideated rapidly with volunteers on site, quickly generating innovative ideas to address these problems. The team gathered on Google Meet well into the night. From that emerged Floodlight, Pakistan's first ever data mapping platform for flood response open and accessible to all. Floodlight was up and running the very next morning, providing crucial real-time data to aid workers, volunteers, and those affected, giving renewed hope that help could reach where it was most needed. Within hours, we rolled out several coordination mechanisms for better data collection and data mapping to help civil society volunteers, aid organizations, and government responders reach the hardest hit areas. Floodlight enabled displaced people in need of food to receive food and shelters in need of medical aid to receive timely medical aid. Collaboration was key. Other volunteer groups, aid organizations, first responders and expatriates eager to support the cause joined forces to spread the word about Floodlight. We learned just in the first week that the humanitarian aid organization, Al Khidmat Foundation, was able to feed over 100,000 people in shelters as a result of Floodlight's data. This was a powerful reminder of what we can achieve through collaboration and a human centered approach. Ultimately, the government reached out to leverage Floodlight as their first data mapping solution, and our team worked overnight to help them so that together we could reach more impacted flood victims. Floodlight demonstrates the power of community-driven, crowdsourced data and the remarkable outcomes we can achieve through collaboration. 
by uniting the collective strength of volunteers, nonprofit organizations, and government bodies, we created a simple yet powerful platform that was able to help the people of Pakistan during an unprecedented calamity. Together, we can continue to innovate, build, and enhance such resilient systems to face future challenges. So uh, this photo <clears throat> probably generated thousands of likes. But uh, what, what uh, happened to these children? Uh, did they get help? Was Pakistan prepared well enough for a natural, natural disaster of this magnitude? Uh, nature gave humanity a powerful warning uh, through the floods in Pakistan in 2022. Despite Pakistan contributing less than 1% in global carbon emissions, it ranks among the top 10 countries most impacted by climate change. The map we see on the screen shows the extent of flooding from June to August of 2022, covering one third of the country's natural ge geography. As a result, th 33 million citizens were impacted, over 2 million acres of agricultural land was destroyed, and over 3,000 human casu casualties were reported. An estimated 16 million children were affected, facing homelessness, disease, and mal malnutrition. Outbreaks like cholera, diarrhea, malaria, and de dengue fever due to stagnant water underscored the country's lack of preparation in the face of such a, uh, a large natural calamity. Um, after the 2010 floods, questions were being asked, what actions were taken in the last decade since the 2010 floods? What mitigation efforts were taken and why was the response deemed inadequate? In addition to inadequate planning, the unprecedented nature of the floods contributed to the lack of preparedness. Sindh and Baluchistan, the two large provinces of Pakistan, experienced five times the usual amount of rain, with some areas seeing over 700% uh, amount of rain. Uh, these rainfall levels were so extreme that they could drown entire countries, uh, similar to the landmass of Ecuador and Portugal. The human impact of floods was devastating as well. Beyond the lack of food, imagine having not access to clean drinking water. In an already overwhelming system, flood survivors living in tents had to, to face the nightmare of medical assistance, uh, assistance coordination. These floods left millions of Pakistanis in need of food, uh, security, and agricultural assistance in a country where already a large segment of the population lives below the poverty line. These floods also caused massive damage to infrastructure, damaging telecommunication networks and the grid network. Over 3,000 telecommunication sites were marked as inactive in the flood-affected districts making it very difficult for coordinating and communicating uh, flood relief. Mobile services and internet connectivity were marked as inactive as well, making it very difficult for relief teams uh, to navigate and respond uh, to the needs of the flood affectees. So time was of the essence. Uh, there were three main challenges that we wanted to solve very quickly. We wanted to get real-time data on the flood affectees. We wanted to improve the communication and coordination among aid organizations. And we wanted to pinpoint the towns, cities, um, uh, districts, and locations where the flood affectees were located so that we could quickly provide them relief. What we needed was a centralized pl platform that could consolidate all this information and allow all stakeholders to review, access, and deploy aid effectively. I would like to invite my colleague Mubasir uh, to share the technical side of how Floodlight came to be. Over to you, Mubasir. Okay. Sorry. 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 Okay. So, as you can see uh, on the map, the there's a cluster you see. This is where I was right in the wake of the flood. Uh, so we were working at the time uh, to build a solution for the election commission of Pakistan uh, to monitor the elections. And so we were working extensively with Usha Hivi. Uh, we thought it as a platform that could, uh, we could use to monitor the elections. And so what we did was uh, we deployed that platform, uh, right? So we, we discussed it with the team. Uh, we come up with the, uh, different surveys, how, how can we create those surveys, and we, we just, uh, in a matter of hours, we deployed that solution uh, on the Usha Hivi's platform uh, to, uh, to monitor these floods. So, what did we do? So, Usha Hivi 
uh, on itself provides a pretty extensive platform. Uh, it provided us with uh, the Twitter integration. It provided us with uh, configuring an SMS platform. So uh, the places where communication was cut off and internet was not wor working, but uh, some of the uh, networks were working. Uh, we integrated SMSs so that people could reach out to us uh, using SMSs where fl uh, flood relief was needed the most. Uh, but on top of that, so at the time when we were working with Ushahidi, uh, one thing that was missing was WhatsApp integration. And as you all know, WhatsApp is he heavily used in the subcontinent. So in Pakistan, people also use WhatsApp a lot. And so we added that as a communication channel as well. We expanded upon uh, that so that we can get uh, reports from people on that as well. Then uh, Ushahidi also has the web and the mobile platform. So what we did was we created these uh, tutorials, uh, you can say video tutorials, that we, uh, in, in the local languages. So in Urdu, we created those uh, tutorials so that people are able to effectively use Floodlight and know how to use it. So we, th that's what we did. And we also partnered with some of the co uh, local community organization. We also trained them uh, on how to use this platform so that they can uh, start putting data on the map so that it provides us with uh, the necessary visibility. The main problem uh, with uh, the floods was that there was a lot of work that was happening, but there was no communication and collaboration between any organization, and everything was just, uh, it, 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 was, it was a chaos. And there was no platform that we could use to see where what was happening and to, to, to organize everything. So th th this is what we did. So we mobilized our, vo our volunteers, we trained them. Uh, we, we had a team of moderators who were moderating the data, but then, the other thing that we did on top of Ushahidi was we built a microservice. That microservice basically transformed the data into multi-dimensional format so that it can be visualized easily. Yeah, so we had a team of 70 moderators. And yeah, so we had a team of 70 moderators and so their task was, say, their task was to put uh, they, they, they had mainly three tasks. One was to verify the data that they were getting from the, the, uh, the, the flood relief areas. The second was they, they were reaching out to people directly. Uh, so so the, the, the data that we were getting through WhatsApp, the data that we were getting through SMSs, they were reaching out to the people directly to, to verify that data that, uh, that they needed help. And they, they were uh, also adding key indicators to the data. So some of the data that we got lacked the, the, the precise geolocation based on the map. So uh, the moderators were tasked after reaching out to those people, they were tasked with adding those precise location and other indicators like what relief was needed, I am medical camps was, were needed, or uh, shelters were needed, or food were, was needed. So they were adding those indicators to uh, the map. But none of this would have been possible with, without our partners. Like, sure, we initiated this, uh, this initiative, we, we worked on it, but Ushahidi provided us with a lot of technical support. Then uh, we had very good implementing partners on the ground in Parklaunch and in flood.pk. They, they uh, boosted this, this platform uh, on their uh, website so that people could reach out more, we could get more volunteers. Uh, Fonda was our mapping partner, so they had satellite maps where they could map the, so, so what we did was, uh, based on the, the, the satellite maps, we did some analysis and we compared it with the floodlight data. Uh, and, and with that, we consolidated which, which were the hot spots where uh, the, the, the help was needed the most. Uh, then, then we had these other organization who are also our technical partners. So, doing all this, we were able to mobilize over 2,700 volunteers who were basically providing us all this data. So with their help, we were able to uh, map around 300 relief camps uh, and uh, relief collection points. Uh, we were able to map over 200 medical camps. Uh, and so uh, we also had a list of charities who were focusing on which area we, we mapped it out on location based on where they were focusing. So we had over 100 charities. And then we also had all those mass kitchens uh, listed on the map so people could find them easily. Yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, give it back to Ibrahim so that he can talk about the more impact. Thank you, Professor. So Floodlight played a critical role in guiding numerous aid organizations target their relief efforts effectively. By providing detailed insights through its data sets, it supported both immediate relief and future planning. 
aid organizations were able to pinpoint the exact locations of the districts, towns, and areas most severely impacted by floods, allowing them to focus their resources um, for effective disaster relief. Flood Light also provided actionable data for rehabilitation activities. Uh, model villages were created providing opportunities and education to the flood affected communities. Uh, this activity was mainly focused towards the long term um, recovery and rehabilitation of the flood affected communities. By providing actionable data, Flood Light provided a new approach to disaster relief and rehabilitation. So what has been the impact of Flood Light? If you talk about numbers, um, like Mubassar man mentioned, uh, close to 1,100 um, data points uh, were mapped uh, across flood light, providing detailed insights to where relief was most needed. Um, a team of over 2,700 volunteers on the ground helped us map uh, more than 300 coll relief collection points, uh, 200 plus medical pharmacies, 50 mass kitchens, and all of this data enabled us to provide relief to the flood affectees and coordinate relief efforts on the ground. But uh, the real impact is beyond numbers. It's about the human impact stories. Uh, Mubassir received a des desperate plea uh, for help uh, from, a food uh, from a shelter in Sawabi who had no access to food. This was particularly heartbreaking for Mubassir because it was a community right in his own hometown. Mubassir quickly reached out to the Deputy Commissioner of Sawabi and to uh, Al Khidmat Foundation, which was a, an aid and relief organization. He quickly connected the two so that they could figure out the food supplies for the, uh, for the shelter. In no time, uh, necessary food supplies were arranged for the shelter, and no one in the shelter had to uh, go to bed hungry. This particular story was uh, heartwarming for us because uh, through Flood Light, we were able, able to provide uh, immediate relief uh, to this particular community. Another poignant story was that of a pregnant woman in the Swat Valley who had no access to essential medical supplies. The floods had cut, cut off many areas, making it extremely difficult for communities to gain access to uh, medication. Through flood light, we were able to identify her situation and uh, ensure that essential medical supplies were um, supplied to her um, in, in the right amount of time. So uh, this made, you know, the stories like these made our work not seem like work, and it motivated us to continue working around the clock on flood light. So going back to the three main challenges that led us to start flood light. We want to expand flood light to get better real-time data so that we can scale flood light. Moreover, we, can, we want to use flood light as a platform to enable government bodies, aid organizations, um, and volunteers to share resources effectively. We also want to scale flood light to cover other natural disasters so that we can create a global platform um, for disaster relief and rehabilitation. We also want to remain open source to allow other organizations and volunteers to tailor the platform to meet their specific needs. So how can you get involved? We want to hear from you. The power of floodlight lies in the power of community. If you're someone who's working in disaster relief, we'd like to hear from you. If you're someone who's a disaster management expert, a data expert, a technology expert, or a humanitarian organization or a volunteer, please join our community. Together, we can build a better future and provide better disaster relief for future challenges. If you if you'd like to learn more about Floodlight, uh, you can email us or uh, or talk to Mubasan and I. We'll be available after this session as well. Or you can scan the QR code to join our WhatsApp community. Living on a hopeful note, uh, we believe that together we can leave a better planet for generations to come. Floodlight is a testament to the power of community and technology in overcoming natural disasters. By working together, we can build a future where everyone is prepared and resilient in the face of natural disasters. Thank you so much.